Hello my good people, this is Gidea Kali here and I am back home. I am back home and I have decided that I will no longer live in town ever. I will never live in town again in my entire life. I'll spend most of my time in a rural setup, okay? Now this is something I have contemplated for quite a long time and it has reached a time when I've said that I have to decide to spend most of my time at home, not in town. Okay, now I have five reasons why I decided to leave town, to come back home, and do not make a hasty decision unless you also have these five reasons. Now, that's our cow there. It's very friendly. It's a very friendly cow. Now, when you turn there, you look at the bananas there. So, I want to be turning left, looking at the cow, turn right, look at the bananas, turn sideways, look at the tomatoes, and turn the other side and you just see maize okay i don't want to live in town now the first reason why i decided to leave town is the kind of job i do so do not make a hasty decision to come to the rural setup without a clear roadmap of how you are going to get finances so for those who know me i am a writer and i have been doing this for about nine years and everything has been stable despite the ups and downs here and there ai coming in and covid 19 which also, which improved the work anyway so i have been doing writing for nine years and everything has been stable and the house you see here okay majorly has been writing has contributed immensely to building it okay so i do writing and it has good returns and it does not require me to be in a specific location so that is why i decided to do it alvin keep quiet i'm recording a video that's my son right there so he wants to talk to me and uh, i'm recording this video okay so that is the first reason why i decided to to come back okay and also the kind of investments i have done um i have invested in bonds i have invested in circle shares and this do not require me to be in a specific location. If they required me to be in a specific location like, like Nairobi and all other areas, I would have lived in town. But again, you know, I ask myself a question. Why am I living in town? I'm spending a lot of time in the house. I'm doing all my things in the house. All my investments are online. Then why am, what am I really doing in town? So, you know, it hit me and I had to come back home. Okay. So the second reason I decided to come back home uh, is the, uh, the kind of amenities I have already set up, okay? At home, I, I have enough water, as you can see here. We have a tank here and we have these supporting pillars here. So we have adequate water here. And we dug a well here. So there is a pump. There is a pump inside that well, okay? And that pump actually pumps water to this tank here. And this tank distributes water to the house. So I have enough water here. And again, I have enough electricity at home. Okay. So there's water, there is electricity. And then at home, we don't have a problem with internet connection. So there's very stable internet connection that can allow me to continue working online. But with all these resources, uh, I can comfortably continue living the life I was living in town. And yet I'm in a rural setup okay and i will miss nothing my income will not reduce my comfort will not reduce and everything will continue so do not make a hasty decision like me coming back to the rural setup without putting these amenities into place okay the third reason why i decided to come back home is the kind of family social support the kind of social support i can get from my family and actually this one I learned it from my dad, okay? You know, being near a family setup, it is something very important. I checked when my dad was still in school and he would take time to come back home. And he used to be with us. He used to give us enough money to buy books. He used to buy us uniforms when we went to school. And anytime we would miss anything, dad would, dad would give us everything we needed, okay? And after his retirement dad is now retired he's at home you see he's with my mom there he's now at home just looking at everything and i'm here and we love our dad so much we give him enough support he doesn't miss us we are here for him just the way he was there for us okay so i asked myself i have two boys and i have a wife and i have a home and i'm staying in town just because i want to fit in 
okay so what exactly am i doing in town let me come back home spend a lot of time with my family be there for my children and provide for them as they see me so that later on they will look at it and say our dad did this and they will also i feel they will reciprocate i'm not doing this so that they can reciprocate but i feel just the way we are doing for our dad they will reciprocate you know dad is a very important person in my life because he still participates in uh, everything i do like i want to start putting up another house uh, in this home and uh, we are starting with a, a latrine and dad is the one who has been directing the process of putting up a latrine as you can see here he's there uh, telling these guys the, telling them the feet and the dimensions of how to put up um, that latrine so he still participates in the building of the home and he gives me enough advice on how to do a lot of things at home here so that is the kind of life i want to give social support to my family so that later on when i'm weak I can no longer work the way I work online. When I only rely on the investments I've put up, my young children, who will now be energetic young adults, will be there for me just like we are there for our father. So that's another very important reason why I decided that I want to be near my family. Okay? Now, this is, we are in our land. We are in our land. Very soon I'm going to put up agricultural projects here. And... I will show you that life in a rural setup doesn't have to be boring and you don't have to look like you are living some kind of a confused lifestyle, okay? Yeah, so that is the third reason I came back home. Now, the last reason I had to come back home was the affordability of life back at home. The affordability of life back at home. You see, in town I have to keep moving, uh, paying money here and there, even very simple things need money. But when you are at home, you can actually spend a long time without uh, spending money. You can get food, you can just move around there. I'm just, I'm just in the land. You know, I woke up in the morning, I've done my writing gigs, I've already made some money. I'm in the farm, I'm just moving around. Then I'll go back home again, okay? And then I continue with my tasks. Then I finish, then by the end of the day, I have not spent so much money. So wh why am I spending a lot of money in town, yet I can just be at home and still achieve what I want to achieve, okay? There's no convenience. If I want to go to town, I just simply take a car and then I go to town. So wh why am I living in town when I can live an affordable lifestyle at home? It doesn't give me convenience to stay in town. So that is the last reason why I came home. Now, the purpose of making this video is not to compel people to leave town and come home the way I have done. These are just my own reasons why I have decided to come back home. And maybe, just maybe, someone later may look at this video and also learn one or two things why it's important for them to avoid the town setup, come and live in a rural setup, continue making money in a rural setup, and then succeed in a rural setup, have enough food, live a convenient lifestyle in a rural setup if you like it. You know there are people who love living in town, okay? So we cannot tell them to leave town and come back to a rural setup. But for those of us who grew up here, and then we went to town to look for money, and then you are still in town, spending time in town, hoping that one day you will retire and come back home. Why, why wait for retirement? when you can just work online and come back home and live a comfortable lifestyle at home, okay? Yeah. Nini? I come. Where do you want us to go? This boy is crazy. Where do you want us to go? Now, I want to address one of the things that made me sad about living in town and rushing up and down looking for money. I think I made the, the, the worst... The, the worst decision ever to be living in town and then rushing up and down looking for for money you know this is our land they have already planted so that's napier grass for the cow okay so what i was addressing is when i was in town and i was looking at ways to make money you see i'm a young man and if i don't find i'm not employed i am self-employed and when you are a young person who is unemployed you know your sources of income are not stable um, they may end anytime soon and so you need s solid investments that can help you make generate money when you st when your income sources end 
So I went to town and then I started investing in very stupid things. Started investing in very stupid things and I put in a lot of money. Okay? So I had just made some good money. I had just made about, uh, about some 3 million shillings. I don't even know if I should be quoting the figures. You know, when you quote the exact figures, people usually tell me I'm bragging. I don't know, I don't know what, means by, what it means by bragging. But uh, in the US, you know, I watch these videos by Dave Ramsey. Let's go home. I watch these videos by Dave Ramsey who gives financial advice and when people call in to seek financial advice they always state exactly how much they earn. Yeah, you find a person calling in and saying I earn 40,000 a year, I earn 78,000 dollars a year, you know I earn 150,000 a year, Dave how can you help me? But now contrary to what I see in Dave Ramsey in Africa when you say how much you earn you are either treated with contempt or they say you are bragging. For example if you say like you're earning like 200,000 every month, they will say you are bragging. But if you say you are earning 10,000 every month, you see they treat you with contempt. So Africa is a very funny place and I wonder. And this is not a problem of black people. I would have said it is a problem of black people, but it's not. Because blacks in the US, even the colleagues we studied with in the university, when they are in the US, they simply tell you I'm working for $35 an hour. I'm working for $30 an hour, okay? When they are in the US, the UK, they are free to tell you how much they earn. People in developed countries. But in Africa, when you quote the amount you earn and the amount you did something with, you it's like you're bragging. I've never understood. But for me, I usually say, when they say I'm bragging, I don't care. So I had just made about some 3 million shillings, okay? And I wanted to invest in something. You see, as I spend most of my time in uh, in the house, okay? I spend most of my time in the house and I wanted to put up an investment that I, n I did not need to be moving around and checking eh, how much is coming in. I just wanted uh, the money to be generated and then I make the money and then, yeah, like that. And I become a rich person because of, of course, the, the end result for all of us is to become wealthy and live a comfortable lifestyle, okay? So I invested, I took, I took two million shillings in my own stupidity, I went and deposited matatu. You see, my son never leaves me alone. He's always working with me even when I'm in the land. He never leaves me alone. Um, so I had three million shillings. And then something told me that the best investment you can do is to go and invest in the matatu business. I had never invested in the Matatu business, so I did not know. So when I went to seek advice, someone told me that this vehicle will be giving you about 3,000 shillings every day on the minimum side. And you will be getting like uh, seven, 8,000 shillings every day on the higher side, okay? And I said, this is good. As long as I have a manager and I have the Matatus running for me, then everything is fine, okay? So I said because I have 3 million, there is no need to buy one vehicle, let me go for two on higher purchase. And if the vehicles can help me maybe get like 150,000 every month, then I will add about 200,000 and I'll be clear the loan very fast and continue with other, continue with other investments. Little did I know I was making a very stupid, very stupid financial mistake. Okay, because when I deposited the vehicles, I realized that NTSA has very stringent measures that you have to follow to comply with the regulations put in place for the matatus to operate. So when I started complying with those stupid things, and then I realized that the insurance, compre comprehensive insurance for the matatu is 200,000 every year, okay? as opposed to my personal car, which I used to pay around 25 to 30,000 every year. Comprehensive insurance. Now for the Matatu is about 200,000. Now for two vehicles that I bought on higher purchase, I had to spend around 400,000 on insurance. Okay, before I started even paying for the vehicle. And then after complying, then I came uh, to start the business. Then I did not know how the police used to do this thing. The police take money from the vehicle all the time and what they do is that they mark the vehicles and they arrest the vehicles periodically. You see, when your vehicle has not been arrested for some time, 
they will make sure that they have arrested it at least once or twice a, a, a month so that you go there so that the police can know you the best commander can know you you see those kind of stupid stupid uh, businesses I decided I will never go back there. I removed those vehicles from the road and I took them to, to, to the school. Matatu is a story I can narrate for a long time. And I do not, I do not advise anybody to invest in that. Uh, so the money I had invested, I had planned to invest in transport. I took most of the money to bonds. I took most of the money to circle shares. And some of the money I invested in other things like... Uh, I don't want to mention because those are things that people can target. You know, when I talk about online things, you cannot attack my online things, but you can attack my own offline things. So those ones, I'm not going to mention. Alvin, let's go back home. Let's go, hmm? let's go home. So you see. And then again, after Matatu, I made another hasty and stupid decision. You know what I did? I took... I took around 500,000, okay? I took around 500,000 and I put up a nice boutique. Putting up a nice boutique after being advised by a friend, building it, going for the stock, and then pumping in enough stock to make sure that the business is stable and then paying rent for a long time, for about seven months, to just ensure that the business picks up well. After three months, guess what happened? Guys came and broke into my shop and made away with a stock worth about 700,000. And the business went down. And I was left in a very stupid debt. Remember, in Matatu, I had to pay a debt of about 3 million shillings. And then I was in the boutique business which I had invested to help me facilitate the payment of the Matatu loan, and the business has sunk, okay? So the 3 million I had already offset about 1.2 million, so I was remaining with about uh, 1.8 million. So the business that has sunk has already returned me to a debt of about 3 million, because on the 700,000 I had borrowed some money, I had to offset it. Now that is early 2022, okay? Now I have to start settling this money in loans. That is... Ab Three million shillings. I'm three million shillings in loan because of stupid business decisions. And so I started paying this money. Started paying this money uh, every month. I was paying like 220,000. 220,000. And you know, I took the money. It's a story for another day. Just be on this channel and you will hear me narrate all those things and the kind of mistreatment I went through. I took that money from Platinum Credit. <laughs> <laughs> after giving them my logbooks and then telling them that uh, th that they can give me they can they can buy off one vehicle and then give me the money for another vehicle then I'll pay the other one okay so I have struggled to pay that money from 2022 2023 and then early 2024 because I had to restructure some of the loans because they were too heavy for me I could not even manage to take good care of the family and it was just chaos. And you know, at the time I was paying those loans, I was also contributing immensely to building of this house, okay? This house that is now complete. So the house stalled. And then you hear stories like you started building a house, you cannot finish. You know, people are people with their own stories. You started building a house, it is good to go slow on the things you do, you know? Very, 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 very funny things. So I'm back home. So I have gone to town. I have walked in town. I have experienced a lot of problems in town. I have invested in things. I have lost money. Then throughout the process, I came, finally I came to Rina. There's a lady called Rina on YouTube who was talking about uh, money market funds. And there's uh, another guy called Okonji on Facebook who is always talking about how to invest, where to invest. So I started learning about money market funds. That is why I started learning about bonds, started learning about shares, started learning about the importance of frugality, started learning about the importance of uh, just en increasing your sources of income and making sure that you put money in the right places, you know. So these things I'm learning late, very late, when I'm already in debt, okay? But now I've finished the debt, and I'm just back home wondering, what did I go to do in town? I went to town, 
put up physical investments, they lost. But when I was in a rural setup here, you know, I started writing here. Everything I put up was safe. And now the money I've put up in money market funds is safe. So why not just continue being at home here and then doing my thing, okay? So right now, I'm just, I just want to do everything here at home. All the videos I'll make here. I'm not making the other traveling videos. I know people are waiting for me to talk about the, 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 the other videos. Uh, we shall talk about that later. Um, oh, my phone has fallen down. We shall talk about that later. I do not think um, I'm in a position to, 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 to give you some of the videos that some of you expect to give you. Uh, I noticed that this game of content creation, you just don't create content, okay? You don't just go anywhere and start shooting everything you, you want. You will put yourself in a lot of problems. So what you, what you need to do is to do, you know, going to comply with the, some checking people in the locality. You know, it's a story for another day. I'll narrate the story for another day. So I, don't, I want to do content that is not, that is not too much demanding, okay? Yeah. So thank you for listening to me. Um, this is Gidea Kali. You can subscribe here and let us see how life in rural setup is. Everything I'll do here, we shall be showcasing here. And uh, to just prove that you can live in a rural setup, make decent income, make progress here, and not live in town. You only visit. Okay? Yeah. Peace.